Hey, we're here with There to Hear. It is a Collab Inc. podcast, and I have with us here today Tom Wentworth. Please introduce yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Tom Wentworth. I'm currently the executive producer for uh, the NBC Creative Partnerships Group based in Los Angeles. Our group works with advertisers and brands who want to align with NBC uh, primetime shows. So uh, anytime you see a brand inside of The Voice or um, This Is Us or any of our comedy shows, whether it's inside the show or uh, in branded content in commercial time, um, we work with those agencies and those partners to develop the content, to make it, and then put it on air. So with this wave of COVID, how has it affected your day-to-day? What does your day-to-day look like now? Yeah, I, I, it's basically the same, except for one huge thing. I get up, I do my stuff, I walk my dog, and then instead of going to the office, I walk five feet to my dining room table and <laughs> set up the computer there, and that's kind of where my day unfolds. Is it slower? Is it, I mean, I, the, the, the people that I have been able to talk with, I mean, they're pretty much in upheaval and shock still. And it's like nothing is moving forward in their company or it's really, really hard for their brain to kind of crank the gears to get back in shape. Um, there's a little bit of shell shock, but there's also a little bit of a self-preservation that people feel like they need to continue business as usual. And everyone has a very different sense of what that is, which is very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot, we had we had five huge campaigns um, in development that most were gonna be shooting in April and May, uh, all at different times, all different types of creative and, and different needs. So uh, we had regular status meetings and we had things to accomplish and then we have our regular calls with the shows and with the legal team, just all the, the infrastructure was still in place. So everyone was still joining calls and, and operating as usual, with the exception of we just don't know what's going on. And so we would start passing these deadlines of like, well, now let's push this deadline. And now we would get, um, you know, we would, a couple weeks ago, we would, we would hear some guidance from the federal, federal government here, and now California changed this, and now New York changed this. And so uh, it was a daily churn of us just checking with different people, like, what can we actually do? And several of us here on my team felt early on, like there's absolutely no way that any of these projects are going to move forward in the current state. But because everyone has their own way of interpreting the world around them, there were a lot of people that just kept pushing, you know, almost on a daily basis of like, well, we'll find out tomorrow. Um, yeah. I mean, so, everything has pretty much screeched to a halt, like all production and all, all of that fun stuff. So yeah. what happens with all of those projects? Because all of our projects have screeched to a halt too. So, so um, again, there were some people living in the fantasy world of like, you know, oh, well, things might be different in April, so let's keep developing. And one by one, projects have been either being canceled, being postponed in the fall, or shifting into the virtual space. Um, I really give credit to The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon for being one of the first in the industry of testing that from his basement production strategy. Um, they, they did a 10-minute uh, video that they posted on YouTube one night. And the next morning, I was on a call with our entire ad sales organization that it's about 1200 people that joined the call. Uh, and they were touting, it was such a huge hit online that they were already planning to shoot another one that day with uh, Len manuel Miranda as the first guest. And they were gonna run it on broadcast. Wow. The first 10 minutes we're gonna air on broadcast right before a rerun. So okay. they were pivoting that quickly. Okay, people are enjoying this format, this is working. Let's put it on air and see how it works there. Um, so we're, we're literally seeing what's happening in the marketplace, internally huddling, figuring out how can we continue to put, incorporate that into the new business as usual, getting it out to brands, getting sign, getting sign offs and then getting them on the air within a couple of days. Wow. So it's actually produced more of a flurry than an, any kind of stall. Huh? Such a flurry. Now I would say a lot of the flurry is like 10 feet off the ground where it, it's not going to touch, you know, it won't have feet, but a couple of these things are actually grabbing traction. Um, wow. One of the cool things that we've been able to do, uh, one of our partners for The Voice, uh, was supposed, we were supposed to be doing a live you know, shoot with the former winner and some people. Um, obviously, as time went on, that just became less and less likely. Especially, we just heard what the format of The Voice's live episodes are going to be, um, which again, completely cut our creative off. But we were able to pivot into, again, this virtual space. So we're basically taking the spirit of what we were doing and then re-envisioning how that would live in the world that we're living in now with everyone 
being remote and being terrified of human contact. And what we've come up with is something that still feels very on brand. It now feels very relevant to the time. And I think it's going to be really neat. We actually got a green light today to start on that. So we'll probably be shooting, quote, shooting that uh, mid-April and then I'll air beginning of May. So how many of these types of projects do you see moving forward like that in that kind of space? You know, it, it, it's hard to say. The The big X factor is like there's, there's three different, what I'm hearing is there's three different buckets of advertisers reactions right now. Uh, the first and most obvious one is the advertisers who their business is decimated and they're trying to just pull advertising money as quickly as possible. Then there's ones who they're not hit as bad, but they're, they're having a hiccup in distribution or specific stores are shut down or just feels insensitive to show people shopping. And so they're looking to push creative a, a little bit down the road. And then there's a, there's a select few advertisers and probably actually a bunch um, but I've heard of a select few through our grapevine that uh, the demand for their product that you can buy in a grocery store is up three, 200 to 300%. And wow. so because they're doing so well on the sales and revenue front, they don't see a need to actually advertise yeah. because the crisis and the scarcity and the panic is actually marketing for them. Yeah, I think the only ad that I feel that I've seen that is relevant to what people are going through right now it was a red bull ad mm. and it was almost shocking to scroll by and see it i'm just like oh oh there's there's an ad for for something that was made for this time that we're in right now mm -hmm. and it made me think about for instance you know the people who are being hit the hardest i um, you know obviously mm. your small businesses and you know your mom and pop shops that don't have necessarily a lot of the uh, you know, kind of like the NBC Sky Castle type of thing where, you know, it's the it's the smaller, more mm -hmm. local, locally based companies that are that are struggling with advertising and stuff. People in the larger company salary jobs, you know, they're starting to have talks of layoffs and, you know, like it's like nobody's safe. <laughs> and is that ever has that ever been um, particularly because this is in the broadcast and entertainment industry? Has this ever been broached yet is like have you heard oh, yeah. any yeah uh it, it's the it's the top question on everyone's minds i mean i'm i'm very fortunate right now to still have a, a job that i can do from home uh, but the forecast is just completely murky right now you look at a company like nbc universal and it's not just television and film but it's theme parks and it's consumer products uh, and it's merchandising and yeah uh, there's so many different revenue streams that make up the whole corporate portfolio and they really do treat it like a portfolio, but when so many, and it's designed that way that a, a specific uh, vertical can take a, a monetary hit and the company can survive. Um, the problem is when you have so many verticals under attack at the exact same time, who knows what is gonna happen. Uh, Disney last week and then NBC Universal this week actually sold off some securities. Uh, I think NBC Universal raised like $4 billion just to have some cash in the bank as a, as a, it sounds like as a worst case scenario. Um, I've, I've, I've talked to a couple people that seem like they know what they're talking about. And part of, part of the huge, so yes, there's the huge cor corporate conglomerates. Then there's the medium sized companies, but there's the small companies that are really going payroll cycle, payroll cycle on the huge conglomerate end of the scale. Uh, they're operating not off of, you know, revenue that came in this quarter. They're operating on a five year plan where, what we, you know, the, the operating cash flow for this year is actually in the bank already. And so I don't, I don't think the major corporations are going to crumble anytime soon. I think everyone has to be looking down the road at what is life after this. And everyone has to be ready for, in, for business to ramp back up into production. So instead of thinking of, you know, layoffs now, I think a lot of the companies are thinking of what is the recovery plan coming out the other side of this? Because if you dismantle your very carefully created machine, the second that we get the green light again, you can't be competitive in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So it's a really tricky decision and, and um, balance that these companies have to make. What do we have to do right now to survive and how do we have to position ourselves to be successful when the immediate crisis is over? Mm -hmm. So in this time then, I mean, I, some of my questions don't really apply then because it seems like it seems like the the flurry of action is very very much underway, and there's much to do in your in your particular sector of work. 
that yes. has ramped up and everything. The word shock is, is they used earlier is very appropriate. Everyone is in shock and everyone responds to shock in different ways. And I think um, currently a lot, especially my you know, ecosystem, its response to shock is to try as many new angles as possible, is to create that flurry to try to see what kind of comes out of it. Yeah, uh, we've seen some things come out, but I don't, I don't know if it's worth the amount of time uh, mm -hmm. other than just people feeling busy and, and feeling like they're in control of their world. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is flurry is not really without results is not sustainable for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So we're, whereas we've been in this thing for two weeks, it'll be a very different conversation in two months, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically just hearsay at this point, but what differences do you foresee? You know, I know that there, it, it, you know, you said at the very beginning, it's going to change everything. How do you see that happening? Well, as we saw, you know, there was like a week where one by one things were getting canceled that we just couldn't imagine life without. Oh my God. NAB is being canceled. Wow. That movie is being pushed back. Oh, upfronts are being canceled. Um, and the more that they started getting canceled, the more you started seeing people either look for alternatives or um, just starting to rethink the whole process of when, again, when we're on the other side of the crisis, how will this thing return? Um, I think the model of television upfronts is one of the biggest things that for so long has existed because it has existed. Um, if you're not familiar, the, the television industry does every year, every single network or broadcast entity has some kind of upfront event where they bring advertisers into a physical place and they show them, here's all the cool new things we're going to do this year. Give us X amount of money. Give us a commitment for X amount of money for the year and we'll put it in all these places. And it, it's a big, usually a big flashy in-person event that's really expensive. Um, and it's just, it's just this traditional thing that, has, that exists because it's always been done this way. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any large company wanted to be the first one to say, well, we're not doing an in-person upfront this year because you miss out on that in-person networking with the people who are making the decisions, even if it's not really deemed, even, even if it's deemed archaic, no one wanted to be the first one to say we're not doing it that way. So what this did was it completely leveled the playing field without anyone having to voluntarily make that choice to say, okay, your in-person upfront is not possible. How are you going to address it? And it's not been approved yet or announced widely, so I can't say it right now, but I've heard what the idea is for what the NBC Universal upfront will be, and it's actually really cool. That never would have happened without this kind of change. And and also it's if this thing goes forward, or if, if NBC Universal goes forward the way that I've heard, it will be changing it from a more exclusive event to something that's much more broadly available to the wider public. Hmm. Interesting. That's what I think. That's the biggest thing that's going to happen here. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of breakdowns in the traditional having to do thing at a a thing at a place, and we've kind of mm -hmm. proven that the world can be virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the working from home thing has been a huge controversy in, in in corporate and smaller business life because a lot of people uh, management wants that sense of control and they want to they want to know where people are and and that they're you know. If, you're not doing your job if you're not physically in your seat or in that meeting where I can see you. Mm -hmm. And this has completely changed that. Mm -hmm. um, we've also, uh, in my group, uh, our leadership structure has, has typically been very siloed. And because of this crisis, they've started doing daily video conferences where anyone can join, but it's the, the leaders who are on video. And so now, you know, for two weeks, I've, I've, actually, seen in, I've actually seen senior leadership mm -hmm. in a way that hasn't been done before. Mm -hmm. which they keep expressing like it's actually really nice. This is cool. Um, so I just, I just feel like the world is a lot of the inequality or uh, inequality is the wrong word. A lot of just kind of like the, the power the factor and the dynamic and the, the, this kind of uneven balance of who can and who can't, I think is going to be just because of physical space and, and proximity, I think it's going to be flattened. And a lot of the world's going to take much more of a virtual or a remote standpoint. It has been a lot more accessible for anybody to create a show if they wanted to. But you're saying that this even flattens it more so. For instance, um, you know, like uh, Jimmy Fallon doing his, doing his show at home 
with his daughter climbing on his back, <laughs> you know, right. like still, still bringing in the viewership. Um, do you feel and like to that, that point? Yeah. Like we, we are a little bit maybe content snobs mm. or people who make content. Maybe we're a little bit where we are the snobs in this where um, we spend so much time and money and resources creating, let's say the tonight show to look a specific way. But if consumers are reacting to it, on just the same level of Jimmy sitting in his living room, mm -hmm. like, why are we doing the other thing? Because we think it looks better, but does the consumer care? It's breaking down the entry points. Um, we've seen almost, you know, any celebrity now can actually, like uh, someone was pointing out that Angela from the office and her husband do a cooking show from their home. Um, what's to say like that can't be a valid show that she just starts doing on her own and gets advertising funding and you completely bypass the platform that, or you bypass the network because we have an open platform now of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I hope quality, the, the overall expectation of quality of content doesn't go down because yeah. people just get used to this yeah. and we lose that, that craft section that makes things look good, that makes things interesting, that, that makes things dynamic. Well, in some ways, I don't feel like you have to worry about that too, too much. I mean, I think with the age of Hulu and Netflix and um, the shows that they produce specifically for those ones that you watch on your laptop or your phone, um, it has changed the landscape of the movies that go to theater and are actually experienced there with other people on a big screen. But I feel like that craft is still appreciated quite a lot I and mean, when you think of 1917 and you know i was telling everybody you have to see that in the theater go to see it in the theater sure yeah. i'm just i'm just hoping like 1917 doesn't become you have to go see it because it's one of the only things because so much of television is and and online content is is produced in this way because content creators are like oh well we don't have to spend as much I think it's going to be an interesting thing uh, once this particular Gen Z becomes your big buyers, mm -hmm. because if you think about how they interact with their celebrities, it's, it's all in here, you know? It has been for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I almost mean, like we're being forced into their world. Mm. <laughs> you sound like an old fogey now. Crotchety <laughs> old man, get off my lawn. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not saying it off. I'm, it's just, it's like they, <laughs> it, it's like they, it's like the younger generation has, has, have been the ones that have been um, creating this world that we've all kind of now found as our, our technological lifeboat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people for the first time are stumbling into these platforms that have existed for a very long time. We're just mm -hmm. now normalizing it as, oh no, we found this new thing. It's not new. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I feel like there's still going to be a bit of that magic there that people will want to flock to. They want to see Jimmy oh. Fallon in person. The only thing is what's the cost analysis? Like what's the balance of investing in a show in a live show? If again, his, his uh, living room sessions are just as successful. Right. So are there any words of advice? or thoughts that you'd have on the state of the business, but words of advice specifically for people who are out there who are feeling a bit more of the uncertainty and anxiety. Um, by the way, anything I'm about to say right now, like I'm also like saying it to myself because in this setting, I, I'm like, <laughs> I, several people have told me, wow, you sound so optimistic and calm. And I'm like, right now I'm playing an optimistic calm person on television. And then I have my moments where like, I'm also freaking out and you know, um, so I'm just prefacing, but one thing that I, that I truly believe is this is the first time that everyone truly is going through the same thing at the same time. And so I know a lot of people are feeling creatively burnt out or like something that they have been developing has just completely died or they just are at a loss of where to go. Um, and again, I remind everyone's going through this at the same time. So when we come out on the other side of this, it's not like you got derailed and now you're behind everyone's in the same place. Everyone who had a project in development got frozen. Everyone who was working on this specific trade or this craft was stopped out of the tracks. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for everyone to kind of come out of the thaw. Um, so hopefully that's a little encouraging. Um, you know, people are at home right now and, and we're seeing 
uh, broadcast viewership spike like 30 or 40 percent across the board. So people are always going to want things to watch. People always will understand the, the quality of a good story. So um, I'm just I'm very encouraged by already in two weeks how we've seen creativity and entrepreneurship find new paths and new avenues. And so I feel like it's incumbent on the creative community to take whatever time people need at the moment and, and be good to themselves. And again, just we're in shock. And so it's okay to wear the same sweatpants for three days in a row um, and just chill. But at the same time, like look at everything from a new perspective. Right now is the time when, when cause there's a lot of things that I, like I was saying before about the upfronts, there's so many industry institutional things that have been the way that, that are the, that are because they've been that way. And people are just like, well, that's the way it is. And now is the exact time for all of those norms to be up in the air. Everything is going to be requestioned. Creativity has such an open landscape. And if it's a good idea and if it's feasible and if it's, it's uh, marketable, I think a lot of people are, are a lot more open to it right now. Yeah. Um, another thing is talent, uh, actors, well-known people are sitting at home right now. Everyone's in the same boat. So if someone has an idea that involves talent, um, I, that also kind of feels like it's working towards making humankind a little bit better, um, now would be the time to reach out to a talent agent to say, I have this thing. Here's an ask. Do you think so-and-so would be interested? Um, you never know what you can do right now with someone sitting on their couch waiting for an offer to come in. Yeah, that's um, very true. And just the last thing, I was on a conference call with the, with the um, MECL, LA and Telemundo 52 station and the general manager of the NBC station here ended his, his Q&A call by saying um, that in all these uncertain times, uh, anxiety and gratitude can't occupy the same space. And that just like was like a tattoo behind my eyelids. Oh, wow. Because I've spent so much time, you know, having the news on and, and just like playing out all these scenarios of what if, what if, what if, um, to the point where I like, I work myself up and, and it feels very frustrating and, yeah. and but just that idea of instead of being anxious about the things that I can't control or can't predict but focusing on the things that I'm grateful for in the moment um have I think it's made a better this week than last week for me so mm. oh, that's amazing well I I appreciate your optimism I appreciate your your practical outlook as well I'm starting to see little seedlings of that productivity in there like all right yeah, maybe there is something that I can be working on right now. There's a, there's a difference between being good to yourself and just letting yourself completely be lazy and, and squander the now. So yes, uh, this is Friday and the weekend I'm gonna, <laughs> who knows if I will shower. Um, it, 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 the weekend I'm gonna, but, but come Monday morning, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna put my shoes on and sit at my kitchen table and kind of attack the day. So there's that. Thanks for being on our podcast. We really appreciate your time. Thanks, Tanya. I appreciate what you guys are doing.